Now we are going to create our own graph of parametric equations. So in order to create a graph, what we want to do is create a table. And this table, instead of just being an xy chart, is going to be a t x y chart. And what we're going to do is plug in certain values for t. So now if I'm looking at these two equations, it looks like I would be able to plug in pretty much anything for t that I wanted to. I could plug in negative numbers, I could plug in positive numbers, I can plug in zero. There's nothing that would affect the domain of what I can plug in for t. So I'm going to just plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If I plug in negative 2 in for the t in the x equation, I'm going to first get a 7, and then a 5, a 3, a 1, and a negative 1. Now I am going to take t and plug it in to the y equation. So if I plug a negative 2 in, I'm going to get a negative 4, and then a negative 1, a 2, a 5, and then an 8. All right, now we are ready to begin graphing our curve. So we'll go ahead and sketch a graph. And this is your basic x, y chart. So we're only going to graph the x, y coordinates, just like you would normally graph. So I have a point at 7, comma, negative 4. I have a point at 5, negative 1. I have a point at 3, comma 2. I have a point at 1, I'm, yeah, 1, comma 5. And finally a point at negative 1, comma 8. So as you can see, we get this line. But what we want to do for a parametric, we don't just draw a normal straight line. We draw arrows to show which way t is going. So as we're looking at the equation, as our x's are going down, our y values are going up. So that's what we need to show. Therefore, I'm going to draw my arrows this way. See how the x values are getting smaller if I draw my arrow that way and the y values are getting bigger? This would show the direction or the movement of whatever our t value represents. Now we're going to write the rectangular equation of this line by eliminating the t variable. So because this is a line, we want our final equation to look like the equation of a line, which is y equals, oops, erase that, y equals mx plus b. So what I'm going to do is 
write t in terms of x. So I can then replace this t in the y equation with an x. So I have x equals 3 minus 2t. So I'm going to subtract the 3 to the other side. So x minus 3 equals negative 2t. And then divide everybody by negative 2. So I get negative 1 half x plus 3 halves equals t. Now all we need to do is use substitution and replace the t in the y equation. So I have y equals 2 plus 3 times negative 1 half x plus 3 halves. Then we need to do a little simplifying. And we get the final equation y equals negative 3 halves x. That 2 is really 4 over 2, so plus 13 halves. Let's see how well that equation matches up with the graph that we drew. So, first of all, let's check the slope. Let's make sure that the slope of our graph is really negative 3 over 2. So, if I start at, let's say, this point, you can see that we do go down 3 and over 2. So, the slope looks like it matches up. Last thing we should check is is the y-intercept about 13 halves? Well, 13 halves would be the same as 6 and a half. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, if I probably drew this graph a little bit better, it looks like it would intersect at 6 and a half. So it looks like that our rectangular equation does match up with our graph. The next thing that we need to recognize is if there are any restrictions on any of these variables. Well, we already spoke about any restrictions on t. It looks like we can plug in basically anything for t, so t has no restrictions. Because we could basically plug in anything for t, we could get any number for x or for y. Therefore, this graph has no restrictions. And if you look at the line, the line would go on forever in both directions, so that's another hint that there are no restrictions on the variables of this parametric equation. Let's discuss the next problem. x equals the square root of t and y equals 1 minus t. So here, there definitely would be some restrictions on t, x, and y. Because t is underneath a square root, we would not be able to plug in any negative numbers for t. Therefore, t must be greater than or zero, or greater than or equal to zero. We can't take the square root of zero, so zero is okay. Because t must be greater than or equal to zero, whenever we take the square root of it, of course, x is also going to be greater than or equal to zero. So now let's talk about what would happen with y. Because we can only plug in zero or positive numbers for y, I'm sorry, for the t in the y equation, it looks like that the biggest number we would get is one because the smallest number we can plug in for t is zero. If we plugged in a one, we would get zero. If we plugged in a two, we would get negative one, so on and so forth. So y would be less than or equal to 1. So those are the restrictions on our variables for the second problem. So now let's make a table and we'll sketch this curve. So we need a t, 
and x and a y. And remember, we can only plug in numbers that are greater or equal to 0 for t. And because it's a square root, I'm going to be smart about the numbers that I plug in. So I'll plug in a 0, a 1, a 4, a 9, and a 16. Make that 9 a little bit more pretty. There we go. All right. So if I plug a 0 in for the x equation, I'm going to get a 0. I plug a 1 in, I'll get a 1. I plug in a 4, I will get a 2. 9, I will get 3. And 16, I will get 4. Now let's take these t values and plug them in for the y equation. So if I plug a 0 in, I will get a 1. If I plug a 1 in, I will get a 0. If I plug in a 4, I will get a negative 3. If I plug a 3 in, I will get a... Oh, I'm sorry. That is a huge mistake. Let's not plug in 3. We want to plug in 9. So we want to make sure that we're always plugging in the t values. So if I plug in 9 in, I will get a negative 8. And finally, if I plug in a 16, I will get a negative 15. Okay, so now let's go ahead and sketch the graph. We get all the way down to 15. There we go. Okay, so my first coordinate just using the x's and the y's will be at 0 comma 1 and at 1 comma 0 oops made a little bit of a mistake there let's erase that okay back on track here all right so 0 comma 1 would be up there. There we go. 1 comma 0 would be right there. 2 negative 3. 3 negative 8. And 4 negative 15 all the way down at the bottom. Okay, so this looks like a line, but remember what's going on. We're dealing with square root functions. So this should look like a curve. And it looks to me like it is half of a parabola. But we'll be able to double check that when we write our equation. And we also need to incorporate some arrows to show the direction. So it looks like as our x's are increasing, our y's are decreasing. So we want to make sure that we're drawing our arrows decreasing with the y's. Okay, so now let's write our parametric equation. So if I have x equals the square root of t, we know that t equals x squared. And now all I need to do is replace the t in the y equation with the x squared, and we get y equals 1 minus x squared. So we were right, it is a parabola. The reason that it is only half a parabola is because of these restrictions up here. So we would want to include the restrictions in our equation by saying x must be greater than or equal to zero, which it is on our graph, and y must be less than or equal to one. 